an electric circuit. In an electric circuit, the first thing we want to do is identify our distinct potentials or voltages. These can be found anywhere there is a junction or between elements. So here at the bottom, we could, uh, for sake of simplicity, assume that this is our explicit ground. So there's a distinct voltage there. There's a distinct voltage between this battery and resistor over here at this junction between this inductor and resistor. So we have a total of one, two, three, four distinct voltages. For each of those, we will establish a zero junction. Zero, 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 and zero. So if we establish our zero junctions, zero here, zero here, a zero here and a zero there. The next thing we want to do is identify if there are any elements explicitly associated with any of those zero junctions. The only one would be our explicit ground down at the bottom. The explicit ground we can treat as a voltage source or an effort source and we can say that, that has zero volts. Now we want to insert our one ports and two ports. There are no one ports in this system, there are only two ports. If we look, we've got a battery that goes between this voltage and that voltage, a resistor between these two voltages, an inductor between these two voltages, a capacitor between these two voltages, and another resistor between these two voltages. So off of one junction, I'll insert a voltage source. This is going to supply E. It goes between this zero junction and this zero junction. Then we've got off of another one junction between these two zeros we have an inductor, no excuse me, a resistor with resistance R1 then between these two, we have a capacitor with a capacitance of C. Between these two, we have our inductor, which is an I element with inductance L. And finally, between these two, We have another resistor. All right. Now, as I've stated before, our guidelines are simply that guidelines. They're not rules. So at this step, we could assign our power directions or we could hold off to a later step to do so. It, our next step would be to eliminate our explicit ground if we look at this problem, we have explicit ground at this zero junction, located right here. If we were to eliminate this zero junction, we would then eliminate this bond, this bond, this bond, this bond, and that source. So, all that would get eliminated. And if we did so, we would be left with a junction with only two bonds. Another junction with only two bonds. A one junction with only two bonds. And another one junction with only two bonds. So if we were to simplify, we could connect this effort source all the way to that one junction, this C element directly to that zero junction, and this R element directly to this one junction. Our simplified bond graph would then look like this. We would have 
a one junction with our voltage source and our resistor. connected to a zero junction where we would have our capacitor connected to another one junction where we would have our inductor and our final resistor. The end result is we have a battery in series with the resistor. That loop is connected in parallel to a capacitor and in parallel to another loop which includes an inductor in series with the resistor. There's our finalized simplified bond graph.